episode 233 of the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, we meet Sipawe Baleka and discuss his book, 4 Minute Fit. You can find the full show notes for this episode at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 233. Have you decided you're ready to make a change? To reclaim your health and fitness, the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast is here for you. I'm your host, Alan Meisner. I'm an NSAM certified personal trainer with a specialization in corrective exercise and fitness nutrition. Let me be your coach as you find your way on your health and fitness journey. All right, let's go. Have you signed up for one of the April challenges yet? We have the sugar challenge, the squat challenge, and the mindset challenge. These can be done individually or you can do all three. Go to 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash challenges. The last day to sign up is March 30th, so don't miss your opportunity for these April challenges, the squat challenge, the sugar challenge, and the mindset challenge at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash challenges. Sipawe Baleka is a very fascinating guy. He was a near Olympian when he was in college as a swimmer. He went on to kind of travel the world and do some different things and became a truck driver. And after he became a truck driver and was a little bit more sedentary, he kind of noticed that his health was failing. And then that was something he was just not happy with. So he made some changes. And in doing so, figured out that the truck drivers of America were really in trouble because of their sedentary lifestyles. And in fact, their lifespan was much shorter than that of most other people. Uh, So he sought out to make some changes, and he actually now is considered the fittest truck driver in America. And he's releasing this book, 4-Minute Fit. I think you're going to find this a fascinating conversation uh, with Sip Away. So with no further ado, here's Sip Away Baleka. Sip Away. Welcome to 40 Plus Fitness. Hey, Alan. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here. You know, it's funny because you you had early on in your book that you uh, felt like you were after you had kind of done your uh, your world travels and explored and done all these great things. I think great things personally, but you, you didn't think you were hireable in the corporate world and you went to truck driving. But I would tell you that in my field and what I do I would have hired you in a split second over so many other people because of the life experiences that you would have brought to the corporate world. So I think you undersell yourself in many, many ways early on, because quite frankly, having the pedigree you had with the education and then coming out from the world travels, I really do think you kind of learned a lot of life lessons that a lot of people don't get. So really appreciated you sharing your story in the book because it really did set kind of the the tone of all of it. But I, I do think you undersold yourself. Uh, well, hey, thanks for saying that. I think now I can understand what you're saying and that makes sense. But at the time, I didn't understand that. And things change and they change pretty rapidly. So I had this non-traditional resume. I didn't have any really you know, traditional verifiable work experiences. And I didn't understand my skill sets or what I had to offer. So in the traditional sense, I just didn't think corporations would be really interested. And I guess that's a good thing because if I had thought that I would never got into truck driving and I wouldn't be here now. Yes. Yes. So to set the stage, you you basically become a truck driver and having been a very, very competitive athlete at a very high level, I mean, Olympic level minus eight tenths of a second level of Olympic athlete, which, you know, is, is nothing in the, in the grand scheme of things. I think one more swim and you, you might have just been there. But that level of athlete then is now in a sedentary job like all the rest of us and finds himself unhealthy and unfit and just wants to try to figure this out because you don't have a, a ready gym. You don't have all the the things that might be available to someone who isn't doing a truck driving type job. So it's complicated. And yet you found a solution. Well, let me clarify something. So it's not like I went from the pool in the gap. When I left Yale University and I started traveling around the world, I didn't do anything athletic or anything competitive for 15 years. By the time I got into truck driving, I I was kind of like, I was an average Joe. Okay. But you're right. I got into this unique environment where you don't have access to a kitchen. You have food storage issues. You know, you're not getting to the local organic farmer's market or getting to the specialties, you know, 
store that's selling the grass fed hormone free meat. You're definitely not getting to the gym. They're not part of the truckers grid, the main interstates and highways, and they're not built for truck parking. So yeah, there were all these severe limitations and challenges in addition to the fact that, you know, you're sitting all day and even when you're not driving, you're still resting and relaxing. You're still sedentary. You can be sedentary as much as 23 hours in this profession. So yeah, was it as a result of that and not having been prepared for this or any training, I had gained 10.7% of my body weight in the first two months of my driving career. Which, you know, is no small feat, but, you know, it's <laughs> many of us have, have gained that and gained that and gained that. And, and what I thought was really cool was you sort of like, latched on to an idea of your inner athlete and said, okay, well, wait, this is not my path because, um, you know, truckers, and I'd say anybody who's sedentary, but you had a lot of statistics about particularly truckers, they're not living as long as they should because they're unhealthy, because they've, they're kind of getting into this lifestyle and, you know, that 10% then becomes 20%, then becomes something that's that's even worse. Well, I did I had that wake up moment, okay? It's different for everyone. For me, I looked in the mirror, I saw I'd gained 15 pounds in 2 months and I did the math and I was like, "Man, by the end of the year, I could be 40, 50, 60 pounds heavier in one year." And that scared me. I had been an, an athlete all the way through college and even afterwards, even though I wasn't doing anything athletic or competing, you know, I still stayed in pretty slim. But now all of a sudden, all that was changing and I was scared. And I realized I had to take responsibility for my health and my wellness while I was out on the road. And that was my wake up moment. And when I was driving during that period, statistics came out that reported that the average lifespan of a long haul truck driver was 61 to 64 years of age, which meant that truck drivers were dying 10 to 15 years earlier than the average North American male. So you're you're sacrificing your health, you don't have the energy, you're not having these experiences, you're away from home, and you're giving up 10 or 15 years of your life. Quickly, I was like, I have to do something. And that's when I started trying everything. Every kind of fitness product, every kind of fitness program, you know, we're talking equipment from dumbbells to kettlebells to ankle weights, resistant, you know, resistance bands, wrist weights. Weighted vests, weighted vests with resistance bands attached to them, sandbags, medicine balls, standalone, you know, pull-up bars, TRX training strap. I mean, you name it. At some point, I had the equipment on the truck. Every kind of fitness program from P90X to GSP Rush Fit to Tybo to Zumba and every kind of, of nutrition plan from Weight Watchers, Adkins, Mediterranean, Paleo, Just Breathe Air, okay, I was trying to find out what works and what doesn't work in the unique environment of long haul truck driving. And what I realized was there's a nutrition and fitness program for everyone in America except one that was specifically designed for long haul truck drivers in this unique environment. So I realized there was a real need. There's 3.5 million truck drivers in America, 69% of whom are have what the American Medical Association calls the disease of obesity which makes them the, the most, you know, the heaviest and the most unhealthy occupation in America. Also has the highest rate of metabolic syndrome, which is a cluster of 60 medical disorders and 12 cancers. So I saw, wow, there's a real need, but there's also a real business opportunity. And that's when I decided I was going to design such a system. And I spent the next three years of my lease driving at Prime designing that system that we use today. Well, and the thing is, kudos to the, the CEO there. You mentioned in the book that he recognized kind of the same problem that you were working to solve. And you're working with him now to, you know, and I guess when at the publisher of the book was to develop something. But I'll be honest with you. As I went through your book, I'm like, everybody everybody's going to have the pretty much the same excuse as a truck driver. Not necessarily as, uh, I would say, earned, but they're all going to have the, oh, well, you know, of course I have to drive to work and sit at my office all day and then drive home. And then, of course, you know, I got to take care of the kids and do this and take them there and I take them there. And so, yeah, I'm going to spend, you know, 9, 10, 12 hours sitting and then cook dinner in a microwave and then sit down for another three hours and watch TV and go to sleep. So, you know, they're doing the same sedentary 23 hours, 
that I think truck drivers are. And so in the book, you share seven strategies and you start in the pretty much in the introduction and you lay them out and then you get into them in a lot more detail later in the book. Could you go through your seven strategies for health when you're kind of dealing with this current sedentary lifestyle? Well, Alan, yeah, you make a, a great point. This is one reason why the book Four Minute Fit is not just a book for truck drivers. It's for everyone in America. This is why it's subtitled The Metabolism Accelerator for the Time Crunched because everybody's crunched for time. You're working, you're going to school, you've got kids, right? There's only so many hours in the day. Everybody's time crunched. The desk bound or sedentary, right? Because you know, even if you're not driving a truck or a taxi, people are sitting at desks all day, sitting in front of computers all day and stressed out. I mean, we live in a society where people are stressed. So you're absolutely right. It, the, the same challenges that the truck drivers are facing is what everybody's facing and then some. So in the process of developing, you know, four minute fit and all of the strategies that are in the book, I had to find what's the least disruptive formula. How do we do this? Because again, you're time crunch, you're stressed out, you might not be even motivated to work out. So the seven strategies that we talk about in the book, that's like the foundation, the minimum effective dosage. And if you do these seven things every single day, you're going to get the results just like the truck drivers did. And so we try to simplify them. Do you want me to go through the seven oh, strategies? Oh yeah, please, please. Yes. I, I'm all about, let's, let's deliver some value here. Let's, let's talk about what someone can put in their life today that was going to change them. They do need to get this book because you put a lot of exercises, you put a lot of detail in the book that I think is extremely valuable. But let's go ahead and share these seven strategies. Okay. So strategy number one is no matter what, get 15 minutes of exercise a day, every day. You got to commit to that. 15 minutes. That's what you're committing to. And why 15 minutes? Well, 15 minutes is long enough that you can get the benefit. In fact, you can get the benefit of a one hour workout in 15 minutes or less if you know what you're doing. So 15 minutes is long enough to get a benefit, but it's short enough that you can reasonably commit to it and fit it in anywhere in your day or night as the case may be. So if you still have the old concept that in order to get to results, in order to lose weight, you got to go to the gym for, you know, every day, you got to spend 30 minutes or 60 minutes or more in the gym to get results. If that's your concept, what if you only have 25 minutes free and available to you? What do you do? In your mind, you say, I don't have time to work out. So you don't take advantage of the time that you do. So I realized that I had to shrink the concept right? I had to eliminate all of the excuses, all of the things that I might use to not work out and just the concept of the length of time. So the book is called Four Minute Fit. So why are you talking about 15 minutes? Well, even if you don't have 15 minutes, all the data, you know, I used a lot of digital health devices in coaching the drivers. I have to because these are clients I don't even see every day. And what we found out was that Everyone that lost weight, average weight loss in 13 weeks was 19 pounds or 7% of your body weight. People that are following the program, the way it's designed, they're losing 20, 30, 40, 50, even 60 pounds in 13 weeks without skipping meals. But the most important critical element was you had to get at least four minutes of vigorous activity. So when you're doing your 15 minute workout, the key is within that 15 minutes, you got to do at least four minutes of maximum intensity. And you know what, Alan, if you don't even have 15 minutes, again, if you just do four minutes, maximum intensity, you're going to get the same result. So that was strategy number one. Strategy number two was each workout must include at least four minutes of vigorous activity. Okay. If you're only going to work out for 15 minutes, you got to make sure you're getting the bang for the buck. And the way you do that is by making sure that it's vigorous. You got to get to the point where you're breathing so hard, you can barely finish a sentence. And by doing that, you're creating a maximum demand for energy in your body. You are engaging your fat burning system at the highest level. Strategy number three is in order to do that, in order to get that vigorous activity, you have to work multiple muscle groups at the same time. Okay. So a lot of people have this concept or this traditional idea of working out where you go to the gym and let's say you're doing bicep curls. When you're doing bicep curls, you're doing the eccentric and concentric movements, or basically you're using two muscle groups. And you're not necessarily engaging your fat burning system. What you're doing is the resistance of the weight is causing little micro tears in your muscle. And then when you go to sleep at night and your body goes into repair mode, right, your body will fill in those little micro tears with new tissue. 
new cells, new muscle cells. And so your muscle gets bigger, but you're not necessarily engaging your fat burning system and training it to burn fat. So if you switch to in the same amount of time that maybe we can do 30 bicep curls, you can also do 30 squats where you're, you're doing a curl with both arms. In such a situation, instead of working two muscle groups, you're working 10 different muscle groups all at the same time. This is how you get the benefits of a one-hour workout in 15 minutes or less. You work all these muscles. You tell your body, we need energy everywhere. So it has to burn fat in order to supply the energy demand everywhere. So those are the first three strategies. They're all on the fitness side, okay? Get 15 minutes of exercise every day. Within that 15 minutes, you got to get at least four minutes of vigorous activity. And if you don't have 15 minutes, just do four minutes all out, maximum effort. And in order to do that, work multiple muscle groups. You're doing any kind of movements where you're using as many body parts as you can. The next strategy, strategy number four, is always eat after a workout. Okay? That's what I call your no-brainer. It's your mulligan. It's your gimme. Right? When you've exercise at maximum capacity, your body needs a lot of energy because it's doing a lot of processes. It's pretty much the one time you can eat anything. It's not going to do any damage. So you want to give your body all the things that it needs to re recover quickly. But this is one time you don't have to give up all your favorite foods. You can eat some things that might not be ideal, but you can eat them strategically in a way that they're not going to do as much damage. And that's right after the workout. Okay. Plus, when you're, you've turned your metabolism on and it's burning fat in an accelerated rate, you want to give it work to do for the next few hours so that it will continue to burn fat at an accelerated rate. That's why you want to eat after the workout. And the key to that is you want to eat the right thing. And the right thing is protein. And we can talk more about that later if we get to it. So that's strategy four. Always eat after a workout. Strategy number five. Eat breakfast or eat a meal when you first wake up because, you know, breakfast we associate with morning. But if you're working the night shift, you're getting up at 4 p.m. or 6 p.m., that first meal, that's your breakfast. So eat your breakfast or your first meal before you start your day and then eat something every three hours. Your metabolism is like a fire. You got to turn it on. You got to get it started. And then you have to keep feeding it to keep it going. So if you don't eat every three hours, you're skipping meals. Your metabolism doesn't have any work to do. It kind of goes into sleep mode. And instead of burning fat, as long as you're up working, you want your metabolism working. So instead of burning fat, it's just storing fat. So every three hours, whether you're hungry or not. And Alan, I'll tell you with the drivers, one of the phenomena that, ha that, that happens to the drivers, whether it's the first three months or the first six months or the first year that they're driving, their circadian rhythms are disrupted because the driver's schedule is always changing. Sometimes they're driving during the day. Sometimes they're driving during the night. Sometimes they're not driving at all. And as a result, they are ignoring and overriding the signals that their body is secreting hormones to make them go to sleep and be in harmony with the environment. As the environment changes, as the sun sets and the light changes and the temperature drops, all of that sends signals to your body that you need to change with it to be in harmony with it because harmony is good. But in truck driving, if you need to drive at night, in order to deliver the load of time, you're overriding those signals. So their circadian rhythms are thrown out of whack. And what happens is the hormones that regulate metabolism are not produced properly, and they literally cannot regulate hunger. Either they're not getting the sig signal that they're hungry and they need to eat, in which case they're skipping meals, or they're not getting the signal that they're full and they need to stop eating, in which case they're eating you know, all day throughout the day while they're driving. And it's the result of a hormonal change. It's not a personality flaw or lack of willpower or anything like that. It's a hormonal change. So you got to eat every three hours whether you feel hungry or not in order to fuel the metabolism. That's strategy five. Strategy number six is in order to eat every three hours, you got to keep healthy snacks within reach. Because if they're not within reach and it's not convenient, guess what? If you don't have healthy snacks, you either have unhealthy meals, which is just the wrong thing. And then the last strategy, strategy number seven is you got to log your nutrition and fitness, okay? Weight loss experts, people in this industry, they'll tell you that the most important weight loss tool is not some super fruit, some super pill, some magic, you know, fitness equipment or program. The most important weight loss tool is your nutrition log. Because if you don't know the nutrition content of the food you eat, 
what are you making your food choices based on? The average person, they're making their choices based on two things, convenience and then habit. What's situationally convenient for me? And then let's say it's going to a fast, your favorite fast food place. What do you do when you get in line? You look up at the menu, you stare at it, and then you order the same three things that you always get when you go to that particular fast food place. So it's based on convenience and habit. The average person can't tell you the nutritional content of the food they eat. In addition, in the book, we talk a lot about carbs and protein and why they're important and how to use that information to boost your metabolism. But if you don't know how much carbs you're eating every day and you don't know where you are, you know, there's a saying, other people have said it, if you can measure it, you can improve it. So if you're not measuring where your nutrition is, how do you know what's doing the damage? How do you know what's the thing that you're eating that's causing the most damage? If you don't know, how do you strategically change what you don't know? So logging your nutrition gives you the information that equips you so that instead of trying to change everything all at once, which is overwhelming, you make one change strategically each week that has maximum effect. And these seven strategies, you, you do them every day, you're going to get the results. Yeah. So to kind of recap that a little bit, and there's, <laughs> there's so much you just released right there with just those seven, which is awesome. That's why I really wanted to get into this is, okay, first is we need to have a movement program. And I can understand from a trucker's perspective, okay, they're they're paid by the mile pretty much is the way I understand it, right? Some drivers. So a company drivers, right, they're paid by, by the mile. And then other drivers who may be lease operators or independent contractors, they're paid a share of the revenue. But the bottom line is, you make money when the wheels are turning. Right. So they're sitting. They're going to get paid when they're sitting. And when they're not sitting and moving, when the wheels aren't turning, as you said, they're not making money. So that's their mindset is the wheels have to keep turning for the number of hours that they're going to let me drive because I do have to sleep and they have to have rest hours and all that's built in for safety. So for them, taking a break, any little break is not getting paid. So when you're in that mindset of, I don't have the time, you have to make the time. And the four minute kind of make it matter thing is really kind of that breakthrough of, okay, once you start doing this, and it, it might just be like you said, every time you stop to you know have a, a break or have a meal, you spend four minutes or so and you just, you kill it. You just, you move multiple muscles, you make it matter, you have a plan and you go do that movement pattern. And so that was kind of the first three gets us through that. And then we start talking about food. It's like, have a plan. Because if you're in a situation where you're pulling up to a truck stop, and I mean, their their whole goal is to just fill you up with sugar. So the next stop, you're just wanting more sugar. And they're going to feed the next truck stop because, you know, you just had this sugary snack and three, two hours later, you just want another big sugary snack. So you're going to be buying all the chips and all the, the crap that they're going to sell there. So having healthy snacks and kind of having a plan of keeping yourself satiated the way that you need to do that. And your plan is basically because they're driving is, you know, about every three hours, make sure you're taking in a healthy snack, healthy food as a meal or a snack. And you just kind of keep that whole thing going so you're not in this situation where you're finding yourself starving and suddenly saying, okay, I'm just going to walk into this restaurant or whatnot and just order it all. Or I'm just going to walk into this truck stop and grab everything on the shelf because I'm in this hungry state. And then I guess the final wraparound on that is, is just understanding that the food that you're eating is meant to be fuel and you have to manage that. And if you don't take the time to measure it and understand what you're doing with your body, then you're not going to get the results you want because you don't really have a plan overall. You can say, okay, I have healthy snacks with me, but in a general sense, measuring it and understanding it is really how you're going to get the results. Well, let me tell you this, Alan, when we say healthy snacks, right, that means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And what I've attempted to do in the book is to break it down in such a way that you understand what eating a carbohydrate and what eating protein does to you. See, when you say healthy snacks, you know, most of the people listening, they're thinking, you know, healthy snacks, oh, that's raw, you know, that's fresh fruit and vegetables, right? So this is the big mistake that most people make. This is what the drivers do, right? They're like, oh, I got to start eating healthy. I got to get fit. I got to improve my health. I got to start eating healthy. So not knowing what we teach in the book, 4-Minute Fit, they think, oh, well, eating healthy means, okay, I need to eat, you know, 
fruits and vegetables. Okay. So what they do is without ever logging their nutrition and analyzing their nutrition to find out, well, what am I eating right now that's doing the most damage and fixing that? What they do is they just go with what they hear. Okay, well, grapes are healthy, bananas are healthy, apples are healthy. So they're sitting in the truck and they start eating all this fruit without changing any of the bad stuff and think that that's how they're going to lose weight. Now, here's the problem. When you don't understand that when you eat carbohydrates, okay, doesn't matter if it's a potato chip, a Pop-Tart, or a banana, or some grapes, doesn't matter. When you eat carbohydrates, carbohydrates are your potential fuel. It's your potential energy. And energy is valuable, right? Don't we got to pay for heating? Don't we got to pay for electricity? If you give your body something that's, that has this value, but your body doesn't need the energy right then and there, it's not going to throw it away because it's valuable. So what's it going to do? It's going to store it as fat. But the drivers don't understand this. They don't understand that that's what a carb is. So yeah, you eat a banana, you eat a bag of potato chips, they both have 27 grams of carbs. Your body doesn't need it because you're just sitting in the seat, moving your arm a little bit to the left and to the right. So your body is going to store the potato chip and the banana and the grape and the orange juice and the Pop-Tart the same way it's going to store it as fat. So what happens is driver, oh, I'm eating healthy for two weeks because I'm eating all this fruit, but they don't lose any weight. And then they get frustrated and they quit and they're like, man, this dieting thing doesn't work. So one, you got to understand what a carb is and what happens when you eat a carb at various times. You eat a carb when you're driving, you don't need it, it's going to get stored as fat. You eat a carb after you've just done four minutes of vigorous activity, it's going to get burnt up. On the flip side, there's protein. Protein is not potential energy. Those are your building blocks, okay? When every tissue in your body, every you know cell, everything, it's all made out of these 22 amino acids that we call build something and you want to build it to last. You want to use strong materials, right? Because the, and the nature of strong materials is it's hard to break apart. So carbs, doesn't matter what they are. They're e quick and easy to digest. Even the ones we say that are slow, you know, slow digesting or slow release, they're still pretty quick and easy to digest. But when you eat protein, your body has to work really hard to digest it because it, it, its nature is its strong material. It's hard to break those bonds, okay? So if you want to give your metabolism work to do, during the day or night or while you're awake and you have a choice between eating carbs and eating proteins, you're going to want to eat proteins because your body has to work four times longer, four times harder. It's going to burn four times the amount of fat than if you eat carbs. So it blows you know, people's minds. I say, man, if your goal is weight loss because you're overweight and you're obese, if your goal is weight loss and you're sedentary, you're better off eating a bag of pork rinds than you are eating the banana because the pork rinds is all protein. And people are like, oh, that's crazy, Sip. That's ludicrous. How can you tell people to do that? Well, I practice what I call nutritional triage. We're not going to be able to solve all of the nutrition problems that a person may have. But for truck drivers, the main problem is low metabolism. And you've got to turn the metabolism on and keep it on. So you have to eat in such a way that you're doing that. And by doing that, you're going to lose the weight. You're going to reduce your risk for 60 medical disorders and 12 cancers. Once you've lost 20 or 30 pounds, you've got that foundation built, then you can go on and work on micronutrient deficiencies or a sodium issue or, you know, cholesterol issue, whatever it is, but you can't do it all at once. And so this book, Four Minute Fit, it's really for, man, if you're, again, time crunch, desk bound, stressed out, you're overweight, you're obese already, you got to fix your metabolism first. And eating carbs, that's the big key. I don't care what anybody else says. I know what's working for the drivers. I have all this data. My drivers keep a food log for every day, for 90, everything they eat and drink for 91 days. So I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sets of food logs that actually show what a driver is actually eating. And we monitor their carbohydrate and their protein consumption and their meal frequency. And it works. If you gradually reduce your carbs, not cut them all at once, gradually reduce your carbs, right? Eat protein every three hours and get four minutes of vigorous activity. In 13 weeks, you will lose 7% of your body weight, which is the standard for reducing your risk for metabolic syndrome. One of the cool things that you shared in the book that I really appreciated was you're not just coming at this saying, okay, I'm a truck driver and this is how I lost weight. And now I've taught other people. I mean, yeah, at one point in your life, you were a vegetarian, you were a vegan, you were a pescatarian, you were paleo. I mean, you kind of run the the whole, I guess, gamut of saying, okay, there's these different eating patterns, but you have a very unique diet philosophy. Could you share that with us? Yeah. Nutrition, when it comes to nutrition, it's all relative. 
there's nothing that's absolutely the right way or the wrong way to eat. There's no one nutrition plan or diet that everyone should be following. When it comes to nutrition, what you need to be eating is based on what is your physiological reality at the moment. Now, scientifically, your body needs 60 essential nutrients every single day in order for every cell to function optimally. You don't get just one of these nutrients in sufficient amount. Something's not functioning optimally the way it was designed. So for the first time in history, because we have, you know, nutrition apps where we can not only track our macronutrients, the carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, right? There's an app out there called Chronometer where you can track all 60 of your essential nutrients, what you intake every single day, and you can actually now score yourself on a scale of zero to 100, meaning 100 being you're getting all 60 essential nutrients in the amounts that you need based on your height, your weight, your gender, your lifestyle, you can know your nutritional score. You can measure to see if you have any nutritional deficiencies. So the correct nutrition plan or diet is anything that gives you the proper amount of all 60 essential nutrients. So, you know, it's not, hey, everybody should be vegetarian. And for a lot of vegetarianism, not done properly is completely unhealthy. And if your goal is weight loss, vegetarians trying to balance all 60 nutrients and limit your carbs, man, that's a hard thing to do. So that might not necessarily be the best diet, but people think, well, that's got to be the healthiest thing, vegetables. It's all relative. And the only way you can judge what is working is if you log it and you can see, am I getting all the essential nutrients that I need? How you do that is up to you. If you live in the Arctic and you're Eskimo and what you have available to you is seal blubber and whatever, right? That's going to be very different than if you live in, you know, Jamaica and you've got all this tropical, you know, produce to pick from. You're not eating curry goat in the Arctic and you're not eating whale in the Caribbean. And you've probably done both uh, given your travels. <laughs> you know, Alan, I'll tell you this. When I was in Ethiopia, we were in the highlands. We got stranded. And the only thing, I was a vegetarian at the time. And the only thing they had to eat was coyote. And I bet it, and I bet it was delicious. I fasted. That, oh, okay. I fasted. Okay. Okay. I did okay. Not eat the, at that time, I did not eat the coyote. I'll eat it now. Yeah. I, I say, I, I still think it was delicious. You just missed out. <laughs> I did miss out. I regret not eating the coyote. Okay. So in, in the book, you, you actually list uh, about five foods that you just say, okay, if you're, if you're really looking to lose weight and this kind of goes on that whole carbs uh, mindset, because most of these, all of these, I guess are effectively carbs. You list five things that say, okay, look, just let's just avoid these things now and we'll, we'll get the weight loss if that's what we're after. So what are those five foods that you kind of go through and talk about for weight loss? Wow. I, di I did that in the book. I listed five you foods did, to you avoid. Did. I'll read them out to you if you want me to. I mean, because no, I thought yeah, this was awesome. Yeah, read them out to me. Let's see if I, if I got that it right. Was, it was basically drinks with carbs. Absolutely number one. And here's why this works. Uh, let, me, let me stop you right there. Let me talk about that one. Drinks with carbs. Number one thing you can do if your goal is to lose weight, eliminate the drinks with carbs. And here's the reason why, okay? One, there are a number of drinks out there with flavor that have zero calories and zero carbs. So you can still get the satisfaction of having, you know, flavor and all of that without storing the fat. Because remember, you drink something with carbs in it and your body doesn't need the energy. It's going to store it as fat. So you eliminate that. And guess what? You now have room to eat more food that has carbs. So the food that you're eating that has carbs in it, you might not have to give it up if you eliminate the drinks. That's the single biggest, easiest switch, number one strategy. If you're drinking soda, go to the diet soda. And then people are like, oh, well, sip, what about the artificial chemicals and sweeteners? And you know that's bad for, for you too, and that's gonna gain weight. And you know what? Probably true. But if you're 30, 40, 50, 60 pounds overweight, and your biggest, remember, we're practicing nutritional triage, your biggest enemy right now is carbs and you're storing fat and your choice is between a can of soda that has 60 grams of carbs and the diet version that has zero, you're going to get immediate effects by switching to the diet version. You have things like vitamin water. Okay. There's a vitamin water zero. There's a Sobe zero. It, truck drivers, you know what? Driving at night, a lot of times, yeah, you're drinking the energy drink. I'm not going to tell you not to drink the Monster or the Rockstar. I'm going to say get the zero carb or the sugar-free Rockstar because everything is relative. If you're used to consuming 60 grams from a drink and now you're drinking something that has zero, 
that's improvement. So another one, and if this surprises anybody, okay, tune out because you're missing the point. French fries. Yeah. I mean, it's all carbs and it's an easier swap than the big ticket item. Okay. The potatoes, it's all carbs, the hash browns, the potatoes. A lot of people, what do we get for our side? We get a side of potatoes. Whether you go to McDonald's or Burger King or Wendy's or whatever the fast food is, you get your big ticket item, which is what? Your hamburger, your your chicken sandwich, whatever it is. And we like for our side, the potatoes. So what I tell, what I show clients, when, once I show them their food log and show them how much the French fries or potatoes, how much carbs it's contributing to their daily intake. For some drivers, it's 10, 20, can be as much as 30 or 40%, depending on how much you love potatoes, right? So it's easier to swap out the fries and eat another side dish that has less carbs than it is to take away your big ticket item, your quarter pounder, or your Big Mac, or your chicken sandwich. Because if you take something away, you got to replace it. So people will miss, you know, their big slice of pizza or their big ticket item. So I'm like, you know what? Strategically, the potatoes, you know, you can do without them. Skip the fries. Not just skip the fries. Replace them. I'll tell you what. Replace them with a, any kind of vegetable that you like. You can eat as much of that vegetable as you want until you are full. And there's going to be very little carbs and you're going to get a whole bunch of vitamins and minerals that you need, right? So you're, you're not doing any – you can eat as much of that as you want and not doing any damage. So you eat your big ticket item and you replace it with a side of vegetables as much as you want. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll put the other three together because I really do kind of think they just all kind of fall in line is the, the rice, uh, the pasta, and the bread. Yeah. All cereals, all grains, all – carbohydrates, very little protein. Okay. So most people, you don't think of that, but really the rice, the bread, what is it? It's a filler. I mean, most people aren't, unless it's really, really good garlic bread or cheesy garlic bread, right? Most people are not going to the restaurant and are excited. And the thing that is getting them excited is the bread or the white rice. You just, that's what you've been taught to eat you know, with certain things and you just do it out of habit, but you can get your sweet and sour chicken vegetables. You don't have to put it on the rice. Let's say you do want to eat the pasta. Well, do you have to eat the garlic bread with it where you're, you're, you're doing what I call carb loading, right? You're putting carbs on top of carbs. We can learn to do without the dinner roll. We can learn to do without, we can just make better choices with the pasta. Now I'm not saying you have to give all these things up. Here's the thing. If you're logging your nutrition and let's say you know, according to four minute fit and you're following the program and you're like, okay, this week I need to go from 200 grams of carbs to 180 grams of carbs. Okay. So you're like, okay, that's what I'm going to work on this week. You're logging your nutrition. Let's say you eat a great breakfast that's low carbs and, you know, great breakfast, like, you know, bacon and eggs, which is a great breakfast for metabolism. Let's say you eat that for a snack. You have a handful of almonds for lunch. You have grilled chicken salad right? For another snack, you have a, a low fat cheese stick. By the time you get to dinner, Alan, maybe you're, you're only at 30 or 40 grams of carbs. If that's the case and your goal was, I, I had to limit myself to 180. Can you afford to eat the garlic bread and the pasta? Yes, you can. And then you're going to, and you're going to sleep like a rock star. <laughs> so one of the reasons why I say, wow, really? I put a list of foods to avoid. People want easy lists like that. They want that, but I always, I try to emphasize there's nothing that you're forced to eat and there's nothing that you absolutely have to avoid. In four minute fit in my program, there's a lot of food freedom. You can eat whatever you want so long as every week you're hitting the numbers that you need. So if you budget your carbs properly, you can eat the bread. You can eat the pasta, but if you don't, let's say you have a terrible breakfast. Let's say you eat the absolute worst breakfast you could possibly eat if your goal is losing weight, which is a bowl of oatmeal, a banana, and orange juice. Yep, I just said that. If your goal is losing, and this happens all the time, guys eating bacon and eggs, it's all protein, no carbs, good for his metabolism, right? All of a sudden, man, I got to eat healthy, and in their mind, they think, oh, health. we hear oatmeal is healthy. Well, it is. I mean, it, it, it lowers cholesterol. It's heart healthy, but just because something lowers cholesterol or heart healthy doesn't mean it's good for your metabolism. That little packet of oatmeal, it's 27 grams of carbs, no protein. And if you're like me, you don't eat just one packet of the oatmeal. You got to have two. 
So that's 54 grams of carbs. Then you're like, well, let me make it more healthy by throwing some fruit on it. Let me throw some banana. That's another 27 grams of carbs, no protein. And then you top it off with orange juice because obviously the most healthy thing in the world to drink is orange juice, right? Because it's orange. I mean, that's what we think. That orange juice is also another 27 grams of carbohydrates, no protein. That breakfast, it's about 100 grams of carbs and maybe five grams of protein. You eat that and you go sit at your desk, what's going to happen if you just ate? Your body doesn't need the energy. Sorry, it's getting stored as fat. You're better off eating the egg McMuffin if your goal is weight loss. So again, you can eat the oatmeal if you want. You can eat the banana, but later on in the day, you're going to have to make some serious decisions about what you're going to eat if you want to hit your number. And that's going to be much harder. I mean, your your first decisions in the day are typically the easiest to make. And so, yeah, if you start out with... Uh, with a bad decision, it's typically not going to get better for you as the day goes on. Yeah, it's just it's it's cascading snowball downhill. <laughs> yeah. So, again, this is a great program. I, I really appreciate it. And you know, so time strapped or not, I mean, reality is we have to make decisions, we have to balance, we have to figure things out. And what I liked about this book was the four minute fit is it, it really kind of looked at life in a balance, which. I think a lot of the programs that you see out there just don't really take into account. They say, okay, well, here's what you do and here's how you do it. And they don't think about, okay, well, if you're on the road, you're not necessarily going to have access to things. Or if you're in this situation where you're sitting at a desk for hours a day, you're not necessarily going to have the ability to do all these different things. So this was really a good balanced approach to saying, okay, let's just figure out what's going to work for me. And again, I think it's a really good balanced program. So way, thank you so much for, for this book. If someone wanted to get in touch with you or get the book, where would you like for me to send them? That's great. Thanks for asking, Alan. They can go to four minute fit book.com forward slash 40. So it's right for this podcast. So four minute fit. So it's the number four minute fit book.com forward slash 40. Four zero. Okay. I didn't know you were going to set up a special uh, URL for us. So thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate you being on 40 Plus Fitness. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. I, I enjoyed it. It's great. And uh, uh, yeah, we want your listeners, right, to go get the book. And, um, you know, for me, I, I'm 45 and I'm still competing in swimming and I try to stay fit. So this is absolutely the place I want to be. Awesome. Again, thank you so much. Thank you, Alan. Don't miss your chance to join us for one of the challenges in April. We have the Squat Challenge, the Sugar Challenge, and the Mindset Challenge. You can do one or all of them. They work out really well together. Go to 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash challenges today. The last day to sign up is March 30th. Don't miss your chance. 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash challenges. Next time on the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, we meet Sally Fallon Morell and discuss her book, Nourishing Fats. Until then, have a happy and healthy day.